food revolution, and you can help help building it. Maybe tonight. Maybe tonight we can start a food revolution. First of all, I'll tell you a few words about Urgenda, the, society, the company I work for. Um, we are the Dutch uh, organization for uh, sustainability and innovation, and we try to make the Netherlands more quicker, more sustainable. And quicker, we don't believe, is going to happen uh, top down, but quicker is going to happen bottom up by people, by front runners, by consumers, by entrepreneurs who just start being sustainable, who start. Uh, 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 producing sustainable and they can start a movement which is going to wash out like a wave over us and that is the way to go as quickly as possible I believe and for me and for all other people and I think for around the world food is one of our main sustainable issues we really really have to change the way we produce and consume our food and for me, we need a revolution to do that. We can't just buy a few organic problem, uh, products or a few fair trade products and hope that Mother Earth will still be feeding us in a few years from now. But how? How on earth do you build a revolution? How can I start a revolution? Maybe I can't start a revolution. But somehow I feel the urge to inspire you to get along with me on this journey and to take along your friends, your families, your neighbors, the shops you buy your food in, maybe the local governments, the hospitals, the schools, everything around you has to be part of this revolution. How? Actually, I don't really know. Let me try an experiment. I forget these, sorry. I could, for instance, tell you a very sad story, which is a true story. But a, pil a billion people on this earth have too much to eat, or they eat too much. And another billion people starve because they don't have enough to eat. I could tell you this story. I could also tell you the story of 400 million chickens, which are pecked in big stables only in this country, and have miserable lives and are stuffed with antibiotics because we want to prevent them from falling ill. I could tell you the story of a lot of farmers in this country who hardly have any income producing our food, and food is the most important thing in our life. I could tell you a story of how we throw away almost half of what we eat, and we throw away all the water, all the energy, all the nutrients that it took to make this food, we just throw it out. I could tell you all this. And I could tell you, I think we've completely lost the balance in this food system. And we've completely lost the connection with our food. I could tell you all this, but will it make any difference? Will it really affect you? Will you start living differently tomorrow? Will you think about this when you are in a shop buying your food? I don't think so. You read these stories in the newspaper every day. You see films telling you all this. And somehow, it does not really affect the way we live. So let me try to tell you another story. I'd like to tell you my story. One year and a half ago, I tried to live, or I tried to eat sustainable, for almost 40 days. And this was my personal search, my personal uh, scouting expedition, you could call it. Um, I really wanted to know if it was possible to eat sustainable. And the first question I have to, had to answer, what is this sustainable food? And. Um, I luckily had a few experts who helped me with that question and I decided, first of all, it was important not to eat too much meat, two, maybe three times a week. It was also important to eat uh, vegetables that grow in season and maybe from nearby. I decided not to throw away any of our, my food. 
I decided to eat fish only once a week. Uh, I decided not to drink any mineral water and a few other things. And what I experienced, um, it was not only the eating that I tried for these 40 days, I had a sort of uh, scouting expedition amongst all kinds of shops, all kinds of people in the Netherlands that are trying to produce or sell sustainable food, bakeries, the vegetarische slager, who has his shop here in The Hague, marked in Den Haag. I even tried to find food scouting in uh, uh, wild nature. Here I'm trying to get some mushrooms that I tried to eat. I visited the underground Boerenmarkt in Amsterdam. I even was in, was in my own neighborhood, getting apples from the teas. I was in restaurants. I was at farmers, another farmer. And I was here at um, Aosta. And during this expedition, I more and more realized what my role as a consumer was and what food meant to me. And somehow, I tried to reconnect with my food. And during this period, I more and more posed questions to myself instead of having an opinion. I asked myself, why do I make the choices I make? And more than anything, I found out that sustainability was for me about being able to recognize the food that I was eating. Could I recognize where it came from? Could I talk with someone who made it? And could I make my own choices? And um, I was blogging, I was making little, I was tweeting a lot about this uh, expedition, I was uh, making little uh, YouTube movies. And uh, along this way, I found out a few things, and I'd like to share them with you. And you'll have to forgive me for that, but I wrote it down in Dutch. So what I'm going to do now is very difficult. I'm going to read out in English something that I wrote down in Dutch. Um, but I did this a few weeks after my expedition ended. And since then, I've not been able to tell the story this way. So I use this text because it's pure for me. Um, sustainability is about taking care of yourself, of others and of Earth. That was someone told me. And with that in mind, I started uh, a contemplation of 40 days. I wanted to know if I could make a switch in my thinking in a relative short period about sustainable food. And the big question, of course, is, did I succeed? And the short answer is uh, yes. But the long story is I uh, experienced a transformation in the way I look at food and look at sustainability. And I hope this transformation remains during the rest of my life. By standing still at almost everything I ate, where it came from and who had produced it, and if I thought it right to eat, I got an enormous appreciation for our food. Globally, globally the aspect of sustainability was getting to the background. The more I came to know about our food system, the more I realized that sustainability is something happening between a consumer, a producer, and the supermarket. If a product is sustainability, is of course very relevant. But if Unilever uh, decides to make the whole product line sustainable, we still don't have a sustainable food system. It takes actions of all of us. It takes choices of consumers. And those choices have to be there. Someone told me food is our most intimate connection with nature. I think it's even worse. It's our umbilical cord. That's a navel string with nature. Everything we eat originates from Earth, one way or the other. Even though we try to do our best to hide this, with massive 
And if you take something from the earth, we we'll have to give something back. So new life can be born. So if we want to be more sustainable in one way or the other, we we'll have to realize that. That is why the role of vegetables and fruit in a sustainable menu is crucial. It's food in its most pure way. And I've experienced that eating only vegetables and fruit from season and from nearby just does something to you. It changes your tastes, it satisfies more, because it's, it's somehow right. And to be able to recognize the food was something else. I wanted to know where it came from, I wanted to speak to the producers, and I wanted to be able to trace my food and to see that it had grown in an honest way and that I could trust where it came from. And by approaching my food in this way, I got a little purer as well. I didn't long, as I did before, to all these snacks that I used to buy in uh, stations. I don't know if I got all the way to the bottom. Maybe I might have I should have gone to a monastery and I should have meditated for 40 days. And I probably would have been better if I didn't have coffee, chocolate or other sweets. But even though in my hectic life I ha have experienced what huge impact food has on me and the world around me. And this is really about abundance, about gratitude, about pureness, maybe about safety, and above all, about love. If you really want to be more sustainable, I really believe that we have to reconnect with those things. Not being sustainable is really all around us, and I experienced it's in me as well. My drive to change the world was a drive from anger. But I felt that only with love and a feeling of abundance, we can make the earth a better place and inspire others to do so. And the food and all the people around me, around it, have showed me that. And for that I feel deep gratitude and I feel the need to do something back. So, I'm back to my revolution. And actually I can't think of any other way to inspire you or to inspire other people. And that we all take our responsibility and try to inspire each other. And that we somehow plant a seed in this world by being human again. Thank you very much.